In this video, we're going to use the levy chabot tensor to prove that the curl of the gradient of a scalar function is zero, and hopefully from this you'll see some of the power of the levy chabot tensor. All right, so let's establish some notation. So first of all, what does a gradient look like? Well, you might be used to doing a gradient of a scalar function as partial f with respect to x, x hat, plus partial f with respect to y, y hat, and so on for how many other dimensions you have. Uh, here, um, and this is a standard notation just for convenience, I'm going to say that the gradient f is partial i of f i hat. And then we know that we're summing over all of our dimensions and including all the appropriate unit vectors. Then we also need to know what a curl is. So a curl of a vector f would be the levy chevado tensor i, j, k partial k of the um, kth component. That got sloppy. The kth component of the vector. Sorry, hopefully you realized I made a mistake there. So these two are not right. Um, did not get the right answer. So it's the partial j of the kth component of the vector. All right. And you might be thinking, well, what use is this with the levy chevita tensor? Well, levy, the levy chevita tensor has what's called the um, anti-symmetry of permutation. So let's think about this. Uh, if I have the tensor i, j, k, i, j, k, I can switch around um, the values. And if I cycle through them, so if I just move one over, so j, k, i, everything's fine. But if I flip them, um, so not just cycle, so notice I just moved i from the front to the back, I actually cycle them. So if instead I swapped i and k, which you couldn't get through get to by cycling, so if I do anything you couldn't just get through by cycling them around, if I actually swap the position of two of them, then let me check it out. k, j, i is going to be the negative of these other two. Um, and that's anti-symmetric permutation. If I flip any of them, um, I have to give it a negative. But if I just cycle them, they stay positive. Well, let's see the power of that when we write out what the curl of a divergence is. And I will do that on the next slide. So if you want to take any notes, do that now. I think I said I was going to write out the curl of a divergence. I'm actually going to write out the curl of a gradient. That was the point. So curl of a gradient. So if you wrote down how we do this in terms of the levy chevita tensor, um, I just do the gradient first and then the curl, and I should get levy chevita, i, j, k, partial j, partial k. And I think, oh, well now I need to start writing out those partial derivatives, right? No, because remember, I can do a couple things. First, I can cycle through, so I can just swap, uh, or not swap, but I could just cycle once through, moving the i to the end and the j to the front. And if I do that, I move both the k and the j forward. Partial k, partial j. That's still of f. But if instead, uh, what if I now, from this position, said that I wanted to swap j and k. And remember, by the order of partials, I'm allowed to do that. So, And when I say I'm swapping, I'm swapping all the notation. Um, you hopefully remember that partials can be done in any order. So if I swap my j and k, then that's levy chevita i, k, j, which I can't get to by cyclic permutation, so this is going to have to be a, a negative. 
Um, well, that's true. So there's no nothing that prevents me from swapping the order of the partials. So this is still equal to, let each other to i j k, partial j, partial k. And notice that now if I just solve this, that's oh, right. One more step. I got ahead of myself. Uh, so now I have that negative. The one with Levi Chavit IKJ equals positive Levi Chavit IJK. Well, now from this position here, I can do one more thing. Well, notice we can flip the notation of the partials for free because you can do mixed partials in any order you want. So now, I've shown that a thing is equal to its own negative, and the only thing for which that's true is zero.